We saw a lot of Diana in the early days of the marriage. Um, Charles has got a lot of interests in property and land in the West Country through the Duchy, um, he, you know, as Duke of Cornwall, as it was his title at the time. Um, he's uh, obviously making lots and lots of visits to farmland to, on Dartmoor and right across the region. And a lot of the time, because they were a team uh, in the early days, Diana would accompany and eventually it got to a situation where she started to do her own stuff and she was also um, patron to one of the naval ships and I remember her arriving in Plymouth on a Tuesday morning and you know we were always wondering what she might be wearing um, because fashion was her way of making statements and that was it was like that all throughout her career and through her life. Can you tell us a bit about the uh, incident in Camelford and how you got that front page picture? Well, that, that, it's an interesting story, Camelford, because um, my role on that day was simply to take the film from the royal photographer from the Daily Mail, a chap called Clive Lincoln, and process his material and then get it wired in quick. So the, the importance of the picture to get material across quickly and early as possible was crucial because it was, it was the number one story on the schedule on the day. You know, where is Diana? Where is Charles? What's going on? So I got to Camelford about two hours before the, the first visits started. It was a rotor situation involving a visit to a school, a library, a nursery, a market stall, and, and just a general walkabout. And even if there wasn't a walkabout, you knew that Diana would always do a walkabout because she sort of, you know, abandoned the rules quite often in that respect. So um, I arrived at Camelford, I rang the office and they said, oh, I'm glad you phoned in, there's a change of plan. We need you to do the job. I said, OK, um, I'll do the job. Where are the passes? Uh, well, the passes are with Clive. He's missed the plane because he's stuck in traffic at Heathrow. So you just have to make do as best you can. So that meant straight away that A, I was doing the job when I wasn't planning to do the job. I was going to only process and, and wire the stuff. And, you, you know, in your head, you've got to change your whole thinking straight away on your feet sort of thing, because you're suddenly you, you're doing the whole job. Um, so I drove on into Camelford, abandoned the car on white zigzags, walked into a greengrocer's shop and said, hello, I'm from the Daily Mail, produced my media card, which is Daily Mail sponsored. Um, I said, I'd like to, buy, uh, to hire your electricity, your water supply and your phone line is £20 enough. This is 1993, so 20 quid was quite a lot in that respect um, and the bewildered lady said yes okay fine so I humped all the gear in I had to clear potatoes off racks and cooking apples and all sorts so I could wedge the machine in because it, there was a cable shortage and I was expecting to be working out of a hotel room you know as opposed to a greengrocer's it was a slightly different concept but you know once you're in the mode you start you know rocking on and you know you've got to get on with it I then had to look at the situation from the point of view that she's got four rotor scenarios, you know, the school, the nursery, the pub, whatever it was, and I haven't got any of the passes. So how am I going to get near her? How am I going to get a picture of her? Because they're not going to worry about that in London. They're going to worry about the fact that they haven't got a picture. And they, they didn't particularly want to take PA. They wanted their own picture. You know, when you've got a budget that, that is limitless, you can afford that luxury in that respect. So um, I decided to walk up the high street and I stood on the pavement with the crowd. I was actually on step ladders and hoped that if she did the walkabout, I'd worked out that she would come down on the other side of the road. So she would walk down the pavement. It was like a raised pavement um, with the rails on it. And she would walk down and then eventually she would come to the... I suppose you would call it the entrance or a lodge to the town hall where she would step in, she would sign the visitor's book and she'd be gone. That was the last bit to do. So I thought, OK, this, this, this might work, you know, maybe, and I was quietly praying. So I caught a glimpse of her with the umbrella over her head because just as she turned the corner, it started to drizzle. I thought, that's not good news. It's, you know, even more problems coming up with that. So she turned the corner and she started to walk down. And all I could see was the umbrella and a bit of shoulder. I couldn't see her at all. And she kept on walking down and walking down and walking down. I'm thinking 80 yards has become 60 yards, has become 40 yards, has become 20 yards. And I'm thinking, you know, 
heart is sinking, you know, adrenaline is just draining completely and I'm not going to get anything. She's got to the end of the walkabout and she's literally about to step into the, into the foyer and then she would be, you know, disappeared and I wouldn't get another chance to see her. When suddenly there was a guy stood there, sat next to his um, Harley Davidson motorbike and he was polishing the chrome because the drizzle was starting to affect the chrome. Not affect it, but it was just, you know, he wanted to keep it clean. And she just turned around fully and said, that's a lovely bike you've got there. I could hear her say it, I can hear her saying it now, because she was literally straight in front of me across the road. And in that 10 or 20 seconds that she spoke to him, I must have shot two and a half rolls of film. I don't know how I did. The motor drives were busy and the picture is there. A lot of people have talked about Diana's charisma. And can you tell us a bit about that and what uh, effect she had when she walked into a room? I think I, I never got so close to as to walking in the room. I photographed her on. I did rotors for the Mail and for other papers, um, and you know it was quite close, sort of probably within twenty feet or something like that. But you know you just it focused your mind because she was such a beautiful person to photograph. You know she was so photogenic. You know different clothing all the time. Great outfits. Looked really you know tip top as I said before. Very very smart. And, she, you know, for me, personally, I, I've photographed on and off over a long, long period of time. You know, my feeling is that celebrity died in Paris that night. Because what we have today is not celebrity, it's just, you know, five-minute disposable throwaway, really.